about seven to eight marks. The standard IBC we had was no taxes. Remember we had Y1, Y2, C1, C2. Now let's look at question 2C. Okay, so they told you Fisherian model again, period 1, period 2. Okay, but now there is a proportional tax levied on consumption. Okay, instead of C1, it became 1 plus T1, C1. And instead of C2, it became 1 plus T2, C2. So this is actually the concept, okay? This is not the exam answer, but just to demonstrate what this paragraph is talking about. Imagine C1 was $1, okay? That was without tax. So now let's say T1 is our 7% GST. So how much do you pay for C1? You must pay $1.07, right? This is what we do, which is actually equal to 1 plus, 1 plus T1 times C1. That's why we write C1 as 1 plus T1 C1. This is what proportional tax is about. You add to your consumption. So C1 now became 1 plus T1 C1. So the same goes for C2. It became 1 plus T2 C2. Right? Period 2, if you spend $1, then the tax maybe is 10%. So you must put 1.1 times that $1. Right, so this is what the entire paragraph all right, in the question says. Okay, that now if there is a proportional tax, household must spend the right one plus T1 C1 to obtain C1. So it sounds strange to you. How come there's so many C1? But conceptually, this is what you meant. You must add the tax. And this is the amount that you spent. Okay? So the question being as given says derive the consumer's new budget constraints when faced with these taxes. Right? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate to show you. Okay? So, let's look at the steps. So we want to derive the new IBC. Okay, remember if we derive IBC, step one, we start with period one. We look at our wealth and it's only Y1. So we assume A naught is zero. We assume there is no non-human wealth. You start off with only an income that you earn, Y1, that's all. Okay, and we consider a saver. Okay, so that tells you, right, how much would that person save? Okay, right? So in this case, if it's a saver, right, consumption, C1 was first of all 1 plus T1 C1. This is already given the question because you have to pay tax. Therefore, savings would be Y1 minus C1. So this is the same approach which I use in the lecture notes. How to derive IBC? We look at a person who say, we look at his decision in period 1. He earns Y1, he spends C1. So the balance, he saves. Right? Except now, C1 has to be written in a more complex manner. 1 plus T1 times C1. Okay, then we go to period 2. But in period 2, we will examine the person's wealth. Okay, wealth at that period, be careful, it's Y2. You earn income Y2. That's why you mark it on your vertical axis. But on top of that, you earn interest with your savings. So you have a 1 plus R times your savings, which you accrued in period 1. Okay, so you substitute in, you will get Y2. So the equation will now look quite complicated. Y1 minus 1 plus T1 C1. 
but all you do is you systematically substitute in. So as long as you understood your steps in deriving the IBC, right, you are able to get this exact equation looks a little bit more cumbersome. So what do you do to the wealth in period two? You must spend all. Right? Okay, so C2 must be equal to the entire wealth. So you will keep writing the entire chain of equation. But what is C2 now? C2 is 1 plus T2 times C2 because this is given in the question. Right? You can no longer just write it as C2 because now you have to pay tax. So equals to Y2 plus 1 plus R, Y1 minus 1 plus T1, C1. Okay, the whole chunk inside. So you look at it very carefully. You are going to reach your IBC already. Okay, there are two methods. Right, there are two ways to express this equation. One way is to group the C1, C2 on one side. Okay, to group the C1, C2 on one side. So if I do method 1, I will bring the C1 to the left. Alright, so see carefully. If I bring this to the left, I will get 1 plus R, 1 plus T1, C1, plus 1 plus T2, C2. Okay, and this is equal to the remaining 1 plus R, Y1, okay, plus Y2. So that was, okay, regrouping income and consumption at one side. Then we will always want to write everything as C1 first. Right? So this C1 will become your, uh, where was I? No, no, let me write here. 1 plus T1 plus, huh? Okay, I want to remove the 1 plus R. Okay, so I will get my C2 over, okay, 1 plus T2 over 1 plus R equals to y1 plus y2 over 1 plus y. So look at this carefully. This is your new IBC. Your standard IBC was C1 plus C2 over 1 plus R is y1 plus y2 over 1 plus R. So this was consistent. Right? That now with the text, the IBC looks exactly the same except C1 became 1 plus T1, C1. C2 became, alright, 1 plus T2 times C2. So even though when we are asked to derive a new equation, the answer cannot be so weird that, you know, it looks different from the original equation. It will reflect total consumption is still dependable on your total income. And where is your wealth in your total lifespan, Y1, Y2 with the interest rate, which affects either your savings or your borrowing. Now, this is the IBC, but this IBC, if you recall, is quite useless because if I draw, I don't know where is the step, uh, where is the slope, where is the intercept. So my method two, either one of them is accepted, huh? is to write it to show intercept and slope. So I don't have space, so I bring it down. Okay, if you recall, your IBC, you draw C1 here, C2 there. So if you look at the equation, okay, you want to write it to suit the axis. So you will get C2, okay, equals to Y1 times 1 plus R, okay, plus Y2, over 1 plus T2. This is your intercept. Okay. Then minus 1 plus T1, 1 plus T2, 1 plus R, C1. So this is your vertical intercept. This is your slope. Okay. So like I say, both methods are the same. Huh? Method 1 was using it to show how we arrange the IBC, consumption on one side, income on one side. Method 2 was done because you want to draw. So if you want to draw, you must know how the curve looks like. So this is the vertical intercept, this is the slope. Okay.
Okay? And again, we do a comparison. Previously, the vertical intercept was y2 plus y1, 1 plus r. For the OIBC. Right? Okay, that was the OIBC versus the slope. Previously, the slope was nearly 1 plus r. So in other words, the presence of the text will affect my vertical intercept as well as my slope. Alright, and this is the additional item. So that's why the question at the bottom says, alright, it gave a hint. Examine the slope of the IBC. So, with a choice of method 1 and 2, method 2 will be more efficient because you need to use it to discuss the slope. Okay, so with that, right? So you can see, don't be frightened whenever they change the function for you, but the steps, the steps for derivation are always the same. That is what part C of our long questions are about. They test your skills, especially your mathematical skills. Alright, I'm testing your concept. So in this case, alright, let's do a quick comparison. Okay, alright. So we put down again, slope of standard IBC. This is this task in part A. Was 1 plus R. So I'm really write down one more time for you. Huh? Slope of the new IBC was 1 plus R. Uh, uh, 1 plus R, 1 plus T1, 1 plus T2. So now the text affects the slope. But how? How does it affect? Alright, so we consider three cases. One, see carefully if T1 is exactly equal to T, okay, the slope would be just 1 plus t over 1 plus t times 1 plus r, okay, which is 1 plus r. In other words, if I have text levit and the text is the same for both periods, the IBC is parallel to each other. The one without text and the one with text, they are parallel. That's what it means. Okay, right? So, I'll just draw one set to show you. Okay, so this is our C1. So this is our original IBC, not when T1, T2 is 0. Right, so you can take two points. This is your maximum C2, your maximum C1. So for this question, I'm teaching you a little bit more because I want you to go back and practice. This is quite a likely question to come up nowadays. Alright, so I just want to teach you the skill set. So you don't just say, oh, this is the slope, but you compare. So if the slope alright, is the same when there is no tax, the slope is 1 plus R. But now, if you have tax, the slope is still 1 plus r, but it must be inside. Why must it be inside? Because if you are taxed, the maximum C1 must drop. You have to pay tax. Naturally, you cannot spend as much. Similarly, the maximum C2 must also drop. Because you have to pay tax. So this is your IBC1, T1 equals T2 equals to T, and the slope is still 1 plus R. Okay? And some of you already know this is the answer to part 1. What if there is a permanent tax? Uh, part 2, shall I say? A permanent tax increase. You keep shifting the IBC parallel inwards. Alright? So you could see this question was a very good test of what you understood from IBC. I mentioned before Alright, in our module, if you are a student who can draw but don't know how to read axis, it's as good you don't know how to draw. You must learn how to read axis one. It matters, it will reflect the behavior. Alright, so with the text occurring in both periods, the slope is the same but you have to spend less on the extreme ends. So it's a parallel inward shift. 
Okay, then of course, two other cases. If now T1 is actually more than zero, okay, and let's assume T2 is zero, means T1 is more than T2. So look at your slope. Okay, would be now 1 plus T1 over 1 times 1 plus R. Right, your T2 is 0. Your T1, you just leave it as T1. So in this case, this will be bigger than 1 plus R. So IBC is steeper. Okay, you can use your old diagram. If not, you can draw a new set. I prefer you to draw a new set. Take it as a chance to do a good revision. What is happening? Right, so still draw your standard IBC, zero, when there was no tax. So you have your point B and your point A, the respective maximum consumption. Okay, so if now T1 is 0, right, this is IBC not slope was 1 plus R. The new IBC should be steeper. But will we draw steeper anywhere we can see? The answer is no. It must still cut at point A. Because T2 is still 0, so it doesn't affect your future consumption, but your current consumption will have to go inside. So this is your IBC1. And you can see this one, the slope, is 1 plus T1 times 1 plus R. So can you see concepts are consistent? The skills that you learn are always consistent. It's never, you know, applying one at different time. No, it's consistent. So diagrams must reflect the economic behavior. <coughs> If you now tax on period 1, you can only spend lesser in period 1, so it go, had to go inside. But period 2, because the tax is still 0, unaffected. So it's a inward pivoting. But the slope is steeper. So very clear cut. So that's why when I teach this kind of concept, I like students to learn slope very well. That's why I always write my equation to show you the slope. Although some of you don't like it, you know it's very troublesome, but it guides you. Okay, then of course, the third case, which is the answer to part one. So I'll just put it here. So now let's say T2 is positive, T1 is zero. It means T1 is less than T2. Substitute into the slope. You will get 1 over 1 plus T2 times 1 plus R. In other words, the slope now is smaller than 1 plus R. Okay, so our IBC is flatter. Okay, because of the T2, the entire value is smaller. So how do you show the IBC is flatter? Same thing, put in your standard IBC first. Without tax. So you have your maximum, C1 and C2. Okay, let's call this A to be standard. Huh? A and B. To reflect maximum consumption. So now there is a tax in period 2. There's no tax in period 1. So maximum C1 is unchanged, still at point B. But maximum C2 must drop. Okay, A drop to A prime, I, B, C1 and check the slope. That's what you have discussed, 1 over 1 plus T2, 1 plus R, or smaller. So a lot of times students rely on memory work. 
Right? I'm very sure when you are doing your intro days, the budget line shift, you shift any old how you like one. And then you take chance. You hang hang get it correct one. But half the time you don't know why one. So don't entrust on that. Please anchor well on concept and understanding. I use the mats to guide me. Then I draw with understanding. Right? Okay, so in this case, there was right text in period two. So this IBC will shift. In the past, we shift IBC because interest rate went up, income changed. This is what we did in lecture notes. But now it's different. With the tax appearing, okay, we shift the IBC. But parallel or not depends on how much. Okay, so with that, you I want you to go back and try out the question. All right, an anticipated rise in future tax rate. This is your last diagram that you drew. T2 positive, T1 zero. So draw for me, where is your C1? Then part two, permanent rise in tax rate. T1 and T2 are the same. This is your case one, the entire IBC shift inwards. Find for me, C1, C2. Okay, so finish off this, and of course, uh, I will go through question 1B and I want to you. And this part next of week, because T1 we will do tutorial 2 uh, as well. <coughs> so these two weeks, we're going to clear all the tutorials, which you is 40% the of the syllabus. Method 2. Okay, so any questions, method say back. Two. You can clarify, you can download you the outline. Decide. It's already on my website. I mean, because you, if you so see method 2, right, then you get the Y the equals to MC. Y equals to like MX plus C, right? That format. Then you'll be able to see where is the graph. People think it. So, when you just see that, okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. You use this one? Yeah. Okay. So, you use this. So, you use this. So, 